Hey everyone, welcome to the industry show. I'm your host, Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Rahul Shah. Rahul, welcome on the show. Thank you for having me, Nitin. Pleasure is all ours. So let's start with the mystery question. Who is Rahul? So Rahul uh, is a passionate uh, professional, uh, you know, I've, I've been in this area in this industry where I've seen a lot of pain points and through my own personal experiences, I really felt there is a better way of doing things. And that's why I created Forecast Era. I really practice what I preach and uh, what you'll see in me is very transparent, but at the same time, we're here to do big things. My goal in life is to give from what I've learned over my professional and personal career. So that's what uh, Rahul is. Awesome. Well, let's talk a little more about Forecast Era. Tell, it, tell us what the mission is and also what's the size and scale of your operations right now and what are you aiming to achieve in the next few months? Yeah, so our uh, forecast really is trying to empower companies in growing through data. Mm -hmm. It's trying to help break the silos between sales and finance teams. And at the end of the day, it's helping uh, achieve better results from a company's revenue growth, right? So, mm -hmm. so we look at, you know, the recent times, uh, we've seen that uh, the the market has changed quite a bit. And what we are seeing in the market is people are relying on data to make decisions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, invariably because companies have silos. What's happening is that the data is not real time. And because of that, we're seeing that there's a lot of growth opportunities that are missed by companies. So what we are trying to do here is really help, um, you know, the enterprises we work with to help them power that revenue growth, break the silos within sales and then between sales and finance mm -hmm. so they can predictably drive revenue growth. That's awesome. And maybe you know, in a few minutes, uh, we can talk about specific examples. But I'm curious about wanting to know why do this, right? You could have done many different things. What piqued your interest in this particular area? And what made you go in? And because what you're doing is not easy. So tell us why. That's a that's a great question, Nathan. Right. So I was uh, having a good corporate job uh, as mm -hmm. a career CFO of a large uh, business unit. Uh, what I really felt passionate about is helping companies grow the business. As a finance professional, sure, I had a lot of opportunities to. Uh, you know, either cut cost or rationalize the footprint. But what I really found myself enjoying the most is in helping our business, um, the leadership that I was working with and helping them drive meaningful growth for the company. I truly believe growth solves all problems, right? If you have growth, people in your company can grow. Uh, there's a positive environment around you and everyone wants to win. And so growth is about winning. And that's really what I I saw that that's that's a big piece of what's missing because of all the corporate silos. And just with my own professional career, I've spent a number of years working with sales leaders and finance leaders. And the why now really becomes because we're at a point, no other point in the in in kind of the history where data is really powering decisions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have real time data to make the right decisions for your company. It has a huge impact. The impact is not just on the individual or a leader, but it's it's got the downstream impacts, right? So what I really wanted to do was with my professional experience, I wanted to break the silos. I wanted to create a software that really helps companies drive predictable revenue growth. And it's a, it's a mix of what I've done, looking at where the industry is and the timing just couldn't be better because, you know, as you look at the last couple of years, we've really come, come out to a place where, uh, you know, Wall Street is penalizing companies for missing their revenue growth. And what we are doing is using data and technology and AI, which has now become stable stakes to solve this particular problem. True. Give us an example of, you know, how what you have built is helping and what's your typical sweet spot when it comes to a customer? Yeah, so we are helping uh, mid-market and enterprise clients really drive revenue growth. And what we've found in the marketplace is revenue operations 
is sort of a new function that was recently created in the last couple of years. And revenue operations job is to look at that lead to revenue cycle holistically. And that's kind of where we feel, uh, you know, our customers really are trying to put process and technology with the growth of that role. And what we are trying to do is help them fulfill that mission, right? Mm -hmm. So a good example uh, is we've helped a client uh, achieve, you know, a great deal of forecast accuracy and reduce the time their salespeople and finance people were spending in creating a forecast. So what I've seen is our customers, and th this is the best quote I love, is they said our software not only impacted the rep forecast accuracy and revenue growth, but we brought about a culture change in their company, right? So they said our uh, software helped them align their sales teams, finance teams. And at the end of the day, we actually helped them change the culture of the company. So I personally feel Sweet. Uh, a kudos like that was really, Sweet. you know, something remarkable for us. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Now, as a business yourself, I'm curious to know what's the one big challenge you're facing? Yeah, so I'll say more than a business, right? Just being running a company, I feel alignment of goals within the different departments is something that, that I always continue to work on. What I realize is uh, there's a corporate vision and a goal and every person in the company needs to understand if they're doing something, is that in alignment with the company goal or not? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easier said than done because you kind of have a strategy session, you tell everybody these are our goals, but then somewhere down the line with the third and fourth layers of the company, uh, they lose that. So just getting that alignment every now and then is really one of the biggest challenges. The other thing I've seen is having too many priorities, right? Mm -hmm. So we all think of pivoting and we have different priorities at different points in time. And what I've found is no more than three priorities is what somebody can manage. True. So it's okay to re-pivot, but making sure that we stick to no more than three to four things that we expect of our team and their teams to do at any one point in time. Makes sense. If everything is important, nothing is important. <laughs> exactly. Now, on the flip side of challenges come opportunities, what's the one that you're most excited about? So the one we are most excited about is right now, we're working on a large enterprise transformation. Mm -hmm. And this is truly where we're putting all our skills, our project management uh, team, and also putting our next generation AI to use. And where what we've really done is we're helping companies identify growth drivers uh, using AI, using intent data, using our AI machine learning algorithms and I feel like that's going to be a game changer because nobody in the industry has done this. What we are essentially doing is we're helping salespeople identify opportunities that they didn't think existed. And especially as we think of like the recession scenario or a downturn, mm -hmm. it's very important to drive more business from your existing accounts. The yeah. question always becomes the timing, right? So you know, and is this a priority in my product I'm trying to sell? Is that a priority for my customers? Mm -hmm. And it's a priority for one customer at some point, but how do, our software is helping them understand this is a priority uh, and this is a, a number one priority for a company that needs our software and, you know, their clients need their software. So that's kind of where we feel really good about the opportunity we're working on to really make a, a game-changing impact. That's super exciting. So one, you're helping identify within your customer base, what are good upsell and cross-sell opportunities. And then yeah. within that, when is the right time to approach your customers? And then also I'm thinking along with that, you also might be able to highlight who's a churn risk and you may want to pay more attention uh, to, so you don't lose them. Right? So retaining is, is uh, better than losing a customer and then going and finding a new one. Exactly. Now, you're a forecasting guru. You love to look ahead. I'm going to take out some muscles that will help you look in the past and ask you to share a couple of examples. One where things did not work out as you had planned and, and became a lesson learned. And another example where 
things did work out beyond your expectations and invite you to brag a little bit. Yeah, so the one where, you know, things didn't work out and I would say the power of persistence mm -hmm. and never souring a re relationship. So we had worked uh, on an RFP. We spent three or four months. We did a proof of concept and we were about to sign the deal. Uh, but as it happens, somebody else came in the mix mm -hmm. and all our efforts got wasted. We didn't get selected as the final vendor. Uh, but what we said is this is a lesson for us. We did not lose, uh, you know, our relationship with that individual. Mm -hmm. That individual came in. No, he did not know us. Uh, and then about eight months later, we got a call from him uh, and he asked us to come back. And he said, you know, it was not about you losing the deal, but how you took losing the deal mm -hmm. and still maintaining that relationship or friendship, you know, try to be a friend of him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, never showing that we lost the deal, right, is, is just the power of investing in relationships sure. and being persistent is kind of where I would say was a great lesson for us. That's awesome. Now, this brings me to my favorite part of the show. We call this the one-line life lessons. And I would love to hear your one-line life lessons. These are simple, profound, short but oftentimes I found them personally to be life-changing. So would love to hear yours. Yeah, I would say like, I believe in, in this one, I think it was Tom Brady, right? Stay hungry, stay humble, right? It's, uh, you know, in life, as you look at it, um, if you're hungry, and this is what I do also when I look at interviewing candidates, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I tell them, if you've come to the table, obviously you have the technical aptitude or whatever we are interviewing you for the job. But if you're not hungry, you're not going to help us achieve great results. And especially mm -hmm. if you think of us as a young company, that hunger and drive is one of the most important things that I've, I've seen and being humble at the same time, right? So that I think is really important for success of any young company. Do you have more you would like to share? Yeah, so I mean, if you again, right? If you don't play to win, you don't play at all, right? So. Mm -hmm. You want to put your best game on um, and, you know, no matter what the odds are, I always think of it as a learning opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not in it to win, though, the odds are not in our favor. If mm -hmm. we don't play, we won't get the lessons. Uh, and we, when we are playing, let's play and give it our 100% and let's make sure that we are in it to win it. That's kind of what the way I look at it. So true. Give it, give it your all, right? Go, yes. go for the big ones and you may miss some, but the ones you do hit, they'll, they'll take you where you want to be and beyond. The next one I would say is uh, if you live long enough, you'll make mistakes, yes. but if you learn from them, you're a better person, right? I truly believe that nobody's flawless. We've all made mistakes. And as we kind of look past in the past, it's really what have we learned from them, right? And it's kind of easier said than done. But I think uh, learning really makes you a better person. And if you made a mistake in the past, if you learn from it, the next time you try to avoid it, that's something that's really going to help you change uh, the way you are as a person, I would say. I love it. The other one I would say is, again, right, if you want to perform at the highest level, you have to prepare at the highest level, right? So a lot of times in life, we think people just got lucky, you know, they've, they've really made it. But if you really look at the best performing uh, entrepreneurs, CEOs, athletes, they really put their level of preparation. Uh, and you kind of have to earn your stripes is what I would say, right? And there is really no shortcut to, uh, you know, hard work and putting in your best uh, and preparing at the best at every level. So that's another thing that I would say I live by. So true. And you may not always get the opportunity to show what you have come prepared with, but that doesn't take away from the fact that you should be prepared and, and even over-prepared in some cases. Absolutely. Yeah. So the final one I would say is the when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? So it's really as, as a young company, as an entrepreneur again, right? You have to have the grit. Uh, to be in it, you're going to have your good days, you're going to have your ba bad days. But when you look at the bad days, and that's really when you really want to make yourself mentally tough. And you want to really have that grit to 
keep moving on, keep doing the right things. And, you know, I truly believe if you do the right things, the results will come. They may not come in the short term, but they'll definitely come in the long term. So those are a couple of ones that that I really believe in, Nitin, that have helped me in my personal and professional life. Rahul, thank you for sharing those one-line life lessons. And I personally resonate with every single one of them. And for our audience, we have an entire collection at onelinelifelessons.com and wherever you socialize digitally. Rahul, thank you once again for making the time to be with us, to share your journey with us. And congratulations again on building a company that's thriving and helping other companies thrive. We really appreciate you and uh, congratulations. Thank you for having me, Nitin.